the PM edition. Uh, if you've just joined us on Newsroom Africa, I'm Liesl Wilson. Stay in KwaZulu Natal province. We've seen that KwaZulu Natal legislature speaker, Non Dembeko Boyce, uh, is currently tabling the legislature's budget for the current financial year. Let's, let's take you live there. COVID 19 expenditure. With due respect and heartfelt condolences to families of the many lives lost and affected by COVID-19 in the province, the country, and globally. The wise and the alert will always draw valuable lessons from every crisis. In the past three or so months, COVID-19 showed us that if we as a people put our minds onto an objective, as long as we remain united and focused, even the impossibilities become areas of new opportunities. Without downplaying any unfortunate social ills and administrative challenges that have, for an example, given rise to some heavily littered communities and dirty cities, we have in the past weeks of the lockdown seen cleaner cities emerging. This begs us to ask questions such as, what new laws are required or which laws need to do to be better enforced to keep our communities and cities clean post COVID-19? What laws and type of oversight is required to ensure that uh, broken and malfunctioning families that produce street kids and people that are prone to crime and abuse are, are are stopped. What better public and civic education strategies on alcohol and drug abuse are required to maintain and enhance responsible alcohol drinking to keep drink and driving and traffic accidents low, as well as keep a low workload in our hospital casualty and other health facilities? How can oversight, lawmaking and public involvement be utilized to take advantage of COVID-19 screening and testing programs, to promote early dictation of and treatment of deadly diseases such as sugar diabetes, cancer, TB, etc. This we need to do to promote healthy living. How should the legislature use its mandate to facilitate a fast recovery of lost economic ground during this lockdown period? How can we creatively take advantage of this crisis to deepen our democracy? We acknowledge the timely turnaround delivery by government on many issues, ranging from tackling crime-related cases to provision of basic services such as water and its communal tanks and many other services delivered during the COVID-19 lockdown pandemic. This indicates that there is a potential to do more and within a short space of time to ensure better quality of life for all. Honorable Chairperson, it should suffice to state that the list is not exhaustive. We are merely giving a few pointers in the direction of areas we are to embrace going forward. Honorable Members, we, on oversight, we have not deviated from the implementation of provincial priorities in the context of the NDP and also espoused in the PGDP. For this sixth legislature and in terms of our threat plan, we have adopted an oversight strategic objective of providing an efficiency and research-driven oversight. Honorable members will then recall that uh, having acknowledged the central role of research and financial analysis in our oversight duties, we committed to continue to find means and resources to provide all committees with at least one dedicated researcher and avail budget analysts to all committees. I am happy to say that to date an additional four committees have since been provided with dedicated researchers. While these researchers are already servicing committees, they are still undergoing training and development and will be continuously supported and exposed to some prescripts. While processes are still underway to secure more researchers for the remaining com committees, we are also focused on buttressing management capabilities in the research unit to improve quality of research and rendered um, and, and uh, research rendered to communities. As part of strengthening our research work and oversight work, researchers, budget and content advisors, as well as cluster managers, received a, fresher, a refresher course on some mechanisms. 
with an emphasis on how best to implement budget information metrics and zoomed on tools of analysis for sector oversight model. This week-long training program included, as well as the following areas, training by the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation on the NDP and the new planning framework, training by the Office of the Premier and the Planning Commission Secretariat on PG on PDGP and on how provincial departmental planning is coordinated to ensure that NTP, PG, DP outcomes and targets are expressed in departmental strategic and annual performance plans. We want to remind honorable members that when our committees in the fifth legislature began to draw up their annual oversight plan priorities from the NDP, this caused some departments to review their APP targeting. It is therefore encouraging to note that the Office of the Premier has since then continued to perfect its coordination of mainstreaming the NDP PGDP into departmental APPs. This move by the Office of the Premier should be viewed as an oversight success story of the legislature. We are happy to provide this positive feedback to the Premier, our MECs and other stakeholders that indeed APPs in the province have progressively embraced the NDP PGDP going forward. Our oversight agenda is now to be on monitoring service delivery baseline information on PGDP outcomes and targets, as well as the work of action working groups. We will be overseeing departments and ensuring that they report progress on their performance against the PGDP on a quarterly basis. To augment our internal research capacity, as we stated last year, we have maintained our relationship with Chapter 9 and 10 institutions. The Chairperson's Committee has had Stats SA providing valuable presentations and briefings in its meeting. While the Commission for Gender Equality has been presenting in our sector parliaments through our research committee and organizational performance units, we are seeking to officialize our partnership with the Commission for Gender Equity. In the last quarter of the 1920 financial year, our units met the CGE to start drafting terms of reference for the anticipated form of partnership. We are looking at concluding on this matter within the second quarter of the ensuing year. Follow-ups on the same with the Human Rights Commission are also underway. Committee work audits and submission of departmental quarterly reports on a rebel chairperson in the context of monitoring the implementation of PGDP through quarterly and annual performance reports. Members will recall that last year we raised a concern on late submission of reports by department. I must say that in the past year, we saw major improvements in this year. There are, however, still some departments that have not as yet pulled up their socks in this area. Chairpersons and portfolio committees are actively engaging the affected um, MECs on the matter as a first step to redeem the situation. The second approach introduced on this matter is that the analysis of departmental quarterly reports have in our 2020-2021 APP been elevated into a quarterly report regime in terms of FAMPLA. This means late submissions of quarterly reports will be reported as part of the legislature's quarterly performance reports that get tabled in the House and to stack off. These reports are subject to audit by both the internal auditors and the AG. Our researchers were also trained by the office of the AG during the week-long workshop that was held at Dewey Trade Port. While the training covered the AG's role and responsibility, but it focused on the legislative amendments in the auditing arena. This was important for our committee's support staff to understand and ensure good governance at a committee level. Honorable members, you will recall that last year we shared with this August House that the audit of committee work through some has moved to center stage. It is for this reason that the AG was requested to interact with the committee support staff. In this context, honorable members, we cannot overemphasize the need to adequately focus on good governance and clean administration in pursuit of good audit outcomes. There is a need to continue to seek and implement means of eradication of non-compliance and corruption with government, uh, within government and the legislature itself. It is important at this 
juncture that I should talk about audits and corruption issues, especially because the president recently made an announcement that the state has planned a 500 billion COVID-19 expenditure to cushion businesses and social grant beneficiaries. This on its own calls for vigilant oversight to ensure that such monies are fully accounted for and they get to the correct beneficiaries without any flouting of procurement regulations. Our oversight committees are committed to ensuring that risk and fraud prevention plans by state departments and entities are effectively implemented. While oversight should cover all budget programs in our departments, it is advisable to prioritize that consume large chunks of departmental budgets. We should also keep a sharp eye on poor audit outcomes, service delivery and fraud issues raised by the public and media because such matters may be precursors of wasted state resources that may lead to service delivery protests. While on the issue of COVID-19 and oversight, Honorable Chairperson, allow me to commend the good work and interventions done by the committee chairpers by all committee chairpersons in their constituency areas and also in their portfolio committees. They intervened when our people were ill-treated during this uh, lockdown period, when regulations were not followed by retail owners, when crime-related activities were taking place, and when many uh, cases were reported. They ensured that MECs intervened and acted accordingly. These were even shared and discussed in their own platform uh, that is made solely for the chairpersons. Success stories of interventions by MECs were also reported in the print media by various government departments, but they emanated as observed by chairpersons and members of this house on the ground. Our people were also reporting their issues and concerns to them for championing as their representatives. As part of ensuring robust oversight, especially on projects by the executive, some requires that oversight visits be conducted to verify reported performance. While this remains an effective tool, it is a tool that needs to be executed with cost in mind. It is for this reason that last indicated that a mechanism would be put in place to ensure cost effectiveness in this regard. Indeed, through the Office of the Chairperson of Committees, controls were effected and honorable members are here to attest to that. In our current state of lockdown, this is one of the mechanisms that yearns for innovation and creative thinking. The functionality oversight program is another type of oversight visit where in the health facilities, schools, war rooms, community policing fora, etc. Well, that was Guazulu Natal Legislature Speaker Nom Dembeko Boyce just uh, tabling, uh, tabling the legislature's budget for the current financial year. Just uh, touching on a few key issues including the provision of basic services as well as service delivery reflecting gender inequality in uh, terms of references.